Good morning and welcome to worship at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Tecumseh. I would especially like to welcome our guests and our visitors with us today. Folks, perhaps, for the first time worshiping with us, we welcome you. And those watching online, we welcome you too to be part of our worship this day. Big day today, lots of things going on. I will hit them very quickly so, so we can get into our worship. First of all, a reminder that uh, at the Presbyterian Church here in town on Saturday, October 2nd, there'll be a blessing of the animals outdoors. And so bring your animals. I think it starts at 10 o'clock. There's a sign just as you come into the parking lot here at church. So look for uh, more news on that. Also in October, we're having a blood drive here on October 18th. So if that's something that you have supported in the past, I encourage you to support it again. Donate blood for the Red Cross. Um, I would like to just give a quick shout out and a word of thanks to Beata and Ron Williams for their work this past week in painting the Sunday school room at the end of the hallway. So if you want to take a look at that, feel free just to mosey on down there after worship and check that out. Um, Today we will be commissioning Brad Kubander as part of our Stephen Ministry team, as one of our leaders. That'll take place after the sermon today. A reminder that uh, we're collecting uh, for the uh, Harvest Collection laundry products this week and pasta next week. Uh, there's a car outside the door with a 
tailgate opened up, you can place your donation there or bring it into church. We'll make sure it gets to the right place. Um, let's see here. Uh, today is our rally day, and it's kind of exciting to, to see so many of you in worship. So we're going we're gonna to have a fun rally day today. But uh, a little event after worship, I invite you to stay and to uh, meet in Luther Hall. We're going to be building and decorating little birdhouses. And I, there's more to this than what I'm telling you. So Kristen, would you come up here? And would you say a few words about the plan for the birdhouse thing? Okay, and say a few words about the uh, birds of prey too, if you would. Okay. Good morning. Um, I, uh, oops, is that me? Too close. I'd like to invite everybody to join us after worship today. We're going to be, it's the building, it's not real intricate. It's just putting together birdhouses. Um, and we're going to paint them also and decorate them. And these probably aren't going to be big enough to put outside to cook for birds, but um, uh, going with the birds of prey, we thought these could be used as little prayer boxes. So you could write your prayers and put them in your birdhouse um, to keep in your house. Um, also, next week is the Birds of Prey program, and that's gonna be at 11 o'clock. Weather permitting, we will have that outside, so you might wanna bring um, chairs to sit out or a blanket to watch that program. And again, it is a community event, so please invite everyone, friends, family, to come see that program. It'll be very special. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as I said, this is Rally Day Sunday. Uh, we'll be starting Sunday school, actually, the classes on October 3rd. So not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that. And as always, churches are looking for Sunday school teachers. And I would like to ask that other than parents, I appreciate the parents teaching Sunday school classes, but they need to have somebody else teaching their kids. So let's see if we can find some other folks who could, uh, could uh, at least take a turn at teaching one of our two classes for this fall. All right, um, I think that will cover all of our announcements today. So let's begin our worship with our gathering hymn. I think we can remain seated for this, but it's gonna be a fun one. Do you want to stand? Let's, let's, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jen. I forgot. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, that's right, that's right, the poem. <laughs> okay, so in just a little while, we will be commissioning Brad Kubander as our newest Stephen leader here at Gloria Day. <clears throat> Brad completed 50 hours of training back in January of 2020 in order to become a Stephen leader. Brad has fallen into his leadership role with ease and his faith and compassion is always present while guiding our Stephen ministers. Stephen ministry is a vital ministry here where our Stephen ministers walk alongside those in our church community who are going through a difficult time. Our ministers are trained and ready to lend an arm to lean on, an ear to listen, and a voice to offer prayers for each of their care receivers. We have a saying that you'll know when your ministry time together is complete, when the caregiver no longer has a care receiver, but instead a good friend. As we prepare for Brad's commissioning today, I would like to begin by reading a poem written specifically for our Gloria Day Stephen ministry called This Tree, written by our friend and fellow Stephen leader, Karen Watson. The roots of this tree run deep and strong as we hold fast to each other, knowing we are blessed and proud to belong. The trunk of this tree stands strong based on faith and goodwill, nurturing, caring, and lending support from its very beginning and continues still. The limbs of this tree confidentially reach far and wide as they lean on each other to find peace, wisdom, and pride. The branches of this tree share the love of Jesus. We know this is true as, the ministry, as this ministry continues to grow and bring comfort to many our brothers and sisters, not just a few. The leaves of this tree, each one is unique. You can see at a glance 
as we lift our eyes to heaven in prayer and believe it makes the very heart of God dance. Of this tree that I speak, it doesn't grow from the ground, but from God's love shared through Stephen Ministry, a vital program that we pray will always abound. Thank you, and Brad, congratulations early. Thank you. As you can tell, there's so many things going on, and I'm just so thrilled that you're part of the ministry of Gloria Day this week. All right, let's begin our worship with Jesus Loves Me, a very appropriate song for the start of Rally Day Sunday. Jesus Loves Me. Thank you. And now I invite you to stand as we begin our worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Kyrie today, we've been learning this, it's the Kyrie from setting eight, Kyrie meaning Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, great way to start our worship. So Jen is going to sing the verses today, thank you. Life and for love, for your work and our play, let us pray 
O God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and you welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings today. Good morning. Oh, we're starting with our Psalm 54. Please read responsively with me. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, O God, God is my help. It is, it is the, the Lord, Lord who sustains, sustains my life. Render, render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. Our next reading comes from James chapter 3, beginning with thir uh, verse 13. The wisdom of God, God gives, unites our hearts and minds. Instead of living to satisfy our own wants and desires, we manifest this wisdom in peace, gentleness, mercy, and impartiality toward others. And the reading begins. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come from down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it so you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of this morning's Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? 
But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Grace and peace be with you, brothers and sisters, friends in Christ Jesus. This is the day that we call Rally Day at church. It's, uh, I guess it's kind of like a rally. You get people together and you want to get them excited about Sunday school and about education and all those things that we've perhaps been through ourselves and now we're saying, now that I'm a grown-up, I don't need to worry about this anymore. I'm not so sure there's much truth in that. It's an appropriate text, I think, for Rally Day because at the end of the gospel, Jesus takes a little child. We've, we've heard this before. Jesus takes a little child in his arms and says, anybody who welcomes a child like this welcomes me. And if you welcome me, you're welcoming my Father. So there's pretty profound significance. Rally Day is all about welcoming. And that's what the church ought to do and needs to do and often does very well. We welcome people. We bring people, not just kids, but adults too, within range of the welcoming arms of Jesus Christ. And it all seems so simple, doesn't it? You know, you recruit some teachers, you, you paint the classroom, you gather a curriculum, you tell the kids Sunday school begins on such and such a date, you choose the curriculum, you wash off those tables that are kind of dusty from last spring, and you come up with a supply of crayons and coloring sheets. But, of course, in reality, there's more, there's more to teaching people about the love of Jesus than that, isn't it? And, and in fact, if I'm gonna be entirely straightforward with you, I would have to say there's a whole lot more about Jesus that is much more complex. It's not so simple as it might seem. Here today we hear about Jesus walking those dusty roads of, of Galilee and he's teaching his disciples. Jesus does a lot of that outdoor classroom stuff, you know, and he's teaching his disciples as they walk. I like to think of it as Sunday school for the grown-ups on the road. He's teaching them that they're traveling ultimately toward Jerusalem where the end of the story will not be sunshine and light and butterflies and and red uh, hearts cut out of construction paper. He's saying, no, in Jerusalem, there will be betrayal and suffering and death. Oh, yes, there will be a resurrection too, but not without first all this other stuff. But of course, the disciples don't quite get it, do they, you know? I have to admit, sometimes I don't get things either the first time or the second or the third. Didn't quite get it, those disciples of Jesus. I attended a little Lutheran prep school in the west, on the West Coast, Oakland, California. It was a Lutheran school that was designed to find and begin teaching students who would go on to be parochial school teachers or even pastors. And... Um, in this little school, we had 104 students in the college. Think about that. I don't care how small the school was you went to, it probably was bigger than 104 students. But we had a little problem. <clears throat> Nobody on the faculty was equipped, was prepared, was trained to teach math. Ah, but the administrators came up with a perfect solution. We were just maybe 20 minutes, a half hour drive down the freeway from Berkeley, California, University of California, Berkeley. And they have lots of smart people who can teach math. And so they contracted with Cal Berkeley to provide a math teacher to come into our humble little school and teach us math. There were about 30 of us in the classroom, I remember that, when that teacher showed up from Cal Berkeley, and a very pleasant guy. And he walked into the classroom and took charge, you know. 
he began to teach us. I remember equations were just flying across the chalkboard. Yes, we had chalkboards in those days. Theorems were proposed and solutions sought for problems we didn't even comprehend. And the, the students in that class were amazed. This guy was teaching with power, and not one of us had a clue what he was talking about. <laughs> but like the disciples of Jesus, I don't know if you caught this when you heard the gospel today, they were afraid to open their mouths and say something, and we were too. We kept our mouths closed. We were afraid to reveal our ignorance, I suppose, in front of this brilliant mathematician. And so we sat there in silence with mouths agape. And after about two weeks, we had our first exam. And the professor passed out the papers, and we all looked at it. And I have to tell you, I think there were maybe five students in the class who got Ds, and the rest of us flunked, failed miserably, got an F for that test. Now, I'm not going to tell you how this all turned out. It actually turned out rather well, but you're going to have to ask me after church how this story ends. But I wanted to point out here that when people hear things that they either don't understand or they don't agree with, they don't like, what do they do? Sometimes they just clam up. They just shut up. Maybe they don't want to reveal their ignorance, like us college students, or maybe they happen to believe something else. Sometimes we get so invested in our own understandings of truth and reality that we just don't want to hear any other explanation. We've seen a lot of that lately, haven't we? Now, those of us who will take the time and make the energy to teach our children or our adults, too, about Jesus, if they're going to do it honestly, they need to understand that there's going to be a fair amount of confusion and misunderstanding, and yes, even some unasked questions. And even at the end of the day, there may be some students who say, now that I've heard what you have to say, I'm not so sure I want anything to do with this Jesus that you're teaching me about. And they'll turn, and they'll walk out the door and never look back. <clears throat> Perhaps unsurprisingly, the disciples who followed Jesus that day in Galilee were silent a second time. We heard that in today's gospel. They get to Capernaum, that place where Jesus hung his hat more than any other place, I suppose, and, and Jesus kind of challenges them, calls them on their silence, if you will. He asks them, what they were arguing about back on the road, you know, when he wasn't teaching and they were talking amongst themselves. Well, I suspect Jesus already knew what they were talking about. They had been arguing about who was the most important among them, who was the greatest, who was the most significant, the most brilliant in the class, if you will. And from our vantage point in time, it almost seems as if they hadn't been paying attention at all. They hadn't been listening to Jesus at all. They hadn't even been watching to see what Jesus did among them. And Jesus, being the good teacher that he was, saw an opportunity to teach again. And so that's when he gathers that child in his arms, finds a, picks a child out of the crowd, takes him by the hand, leads him over, sets him on his lap, and he makes reference to that child with these memorable words, whoever welcomes a child in my name welcomes me. Do you get that? Yeah, you get that. I get that too. I get that Christianity, our faith, is not about status and power and prestige and standing and all those other things that... Most of us in the world say, oh yeah, that's what life is all about. No, that's not what Jesus is all about. And these children, these children, they were the ones with whom Jesus identified. Think about it, children, back in that day especially, they were not like kids today, kids who are privileged and, well, happily wanted mostly. 
These were children who were considered unimportant and insignificant, the poor, the unnoticed, the unwanted children. Now I can understand, and maybe you can too, why the disciples were silent in the presence of Jesus, who knew, in fact, what they had been disputing among themselves, arguing about on the road, who was the greatest, who was the most important, who was the most significant, who had a leg up on the rest of the followers of Jesus. But Jesus must have been shaking his head and saying, oy vey, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. They missed the point completely. This morning I'd like to take this gospel reading from Mark's gospel as a lesson for ourselves and for the church. Jesus taught the students on the road and they were adults. The kids don't show up until the end of the gospel reading. He was teaching the adults. He was teaching folks like us. It's a lesson for us and for the church today. It's a lesson that shows us a Jesus who was constantly surprising us, constantly amazing us, constantly upending our notions of what Christianity is or ought to be. We, we have a lot to learn, don't we? And I'll say that about myself first. I have a lot to learn. In that sense, maybe class is just now beginning, isn't it? Just beginning. And so what do we do? We rally together. I like that word, rally. I'm a car guy. I like car rallies, okay? We, we come together. We encourage one another to grow in our faith and our understanding. Not just the kids in that freshly painted classroom down there, but all of us to learn something. And so we invite one another to participate in an adult class. I am absolutely thrilled. I forgot to mention this early during the announcements, but Rebecca Norp has been working with me. We've come up with a wonderful um, uh, Bible study uh, from John's Gospel, the great I Am statements from John's Gospel, filmed in the Holy Land. It's going to be starting uh, soon, so watch for announcements about that. And if you read the newsletter uh, from last Monday, you may have noticed that I, I announced that, but I also said at the end, I said, okay, men in the congregation, I haven't heard from you. I've invited you to tell me what kind of a study you'd like to do, and hadn't heard a word. I did hear from one of you who said, I think we need to have a conversation about faith. How does faith begin? How does faith live? How does faith grow? And I get excited about that, and I think, all right, we need to do that, too. We need to have that study. You see, it's not just the kids who need to rally on a day like that, but all of us. And in the, in the process of teaching and learning amongst ourselves, teaching each other and learning from each other, in the process of making Jesus visible, to the world and to ourselves, of asking and answering tough questions. In the midst of all that, we discover that this is how the church grows. This is how faith grows. This is how the church is strengthened. And the community of Christ, which is the body of Christ, is built. So today, I say welcome to the kids, welcome to you, and welcome to the grown-ups. Welcome to the adults and the disciples. Welcome to the servants and to those being served. And welcome, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And now with delight, we invite Brad Kubander to come forward and all of our Stephen ministry leaders and servants. If you would come forward, we'd like to install Brad as uh, one of our leaders today. So anybody who's, even even former uh, Stephen ministry members, would you come forward? Even if you're no longer doing this ministry, please come forward. And I'm going to ask you just to stand up in front right there, and I'm going to stand behind you. How's that? Okay. There we go. All right. In case you don't know about Stephen Ministry, it's a wonderful uh, ministry that folks get trained for to provide comfort and strength and resources to church folks and others outside the church who, uh, there we go. All right. All right. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, okay, thank you for gathering here today. Brad, Brad, you have been trained at a Stephen Series Leaders Training course, and you've been asked to serve as a Stephen's ministry leader at Gloria Day. You, Brad, are a gift of God to us. We see you that way. You've been called to lead us in this organized, caring ministry in which we have or committed ourselves to undertake. Brad. (laughs) Brad. (laughs) Casey couldn't hear you. (laughs) And go ahead, lay your hands as close as you can. Dear Brad, as Christians who are a part of the priesthood of all believers, all of us are called to offer ourselves to God in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us in Jesus Christ. It is our privilege to recognize and support those who are trained for specific ministries in this congregation Today, we recognize and affirm Stephen ministry among us here at Gloria Day. Because of your gifts, your calling, and your training, Brad, we charge you with these responsibilities. To sensitize the members of this congregation to the growing caring ministry among us to continue to solicit the commitment of this congregation to Stephen Ministry at every opportunity, to recruit, select, and thoroughly train as Stephen Ministers those members of this congregation whose gift it is to share one-to-one caring ministry, to utilize the resources of our community as appropriate or necessary to enrich the training and ongoing supervision of Stephen Ministries in this congregation, to work with Pastor Retner of this congregation to identify members who could benefit from this confidential caring ministry and encourage them to benefit from the ministry of a trained caregiver in addition to the regular care of the pastor. To assign the trained caregiver who most appropriately fits a person's needs and to supervise these confidential caring relationships and offer regular opportunities for continuing growth in the skills and practice of caring caring ministry. All right, now Brad, it's my pleasure, my delight to uh, invite you to ask you to (laughs) respond to our questions this day. Uh, And I will, I will, uh, the answer is very simple. I will and I ask God to help me, but let me ask the question first. Brad, will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, then answer, I will and I ask God to help me. I will and I ask God to help me. Will you nurture the skills that you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, build up, and heal people in all their needs? If so, then answer, I will and I ask God to help me. I will and I ask God to help me. 
And now I address some words to you, the congregation of Gloria Day, to the members. Will you open your hearts to receive the ministry of our Stephen ministry leaders and Stephen ministers, carefully trained caregivers to those in need of supportive ministry? Will you, as they encourage confidentiality and thereby help to equip the saints for ministry? If you will offer this support, then I invite you to respond, yes, with the help of God. Yes, yes. with the help of God. That? Oh, let us pray. Gracious God, you have called Brad to lead us into new paths of caring ministry. You have gifted and empowered him for this task. Grant him service and a spirit of bold trust in you, that his ministry may stir us to greater caring and more fruitful service. Help us all to be both willing servants and thankful recipients of this ministry, so that your name may be glorified, your people live in peace, and your good and gracious will be done. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. And now, Brad, our special gift to this day, a gift to the church. May the Lord of the church fill you with the Holy Spirit and guide and bless and keep you so that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been called, gifted, trained, and sent. And the people say, Amen. 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 Go in peace, brother. Thank you. As they return to their seats, I invite you all to stand and join with me as we affirm our faith as we normally do on a Sunday. We affirm our faith today using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, along with members of the church and others who we are aware of is in need of prayer, we also want to pray for Margie Hovatter. That's the uh, um, husband of Cardi Hovatter, uh, who passed away very suddenly at the age, I believe, 94. Uh, that's Jim Felton's um, brother-in-law, Jim Felton's brother-in-law. So Margie Hovat, her, we include her in our prayers today too. And now made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all people in any need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, and responding, hear our prayer. Let us pray. O God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you, Help us to overcome our divisions, that we might be encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for creation and empower us to support those agencies and organizations and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious God of cooperation, we pray for the nations of the world now embroiled in continuing conflict, especially in the Middle East. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and to work toward peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children, those who cannot find safety in their own home or country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them to find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation, for the children and the middle schoolers and the high schoolers especially. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. And as they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This day, Lord, we are bold to pray for those whose needs are known to us and those whose needs are known perhaps only to you. We pray especially for Tom and Courtney, for Donna and Juliana, for Mike and Robert, Kathy, for Teddy, for Sue and Jerry, for Rose, for Megan, for our pastor, Pastor Sarah, for Margie grieving the death of her husband, and for all those struggling with COVID-19 all over the world, and especially in Idaho and other hot spots in our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, receive these prayers and those in our hearts known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we prepare our hearts to gather at the table of our Lord, we begin so by confessing our sins in the presence of God and each other, knowing with all assurance and all confidence that our God is one who is quick to forgive, and he forgives us. Let us confess now together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. O God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity we turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now in the name of Jesus Christ, I announce that your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. Please be seated as we uh, consecrate the gifts that we have. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. I would remind you that if you had not uh, brought bread with you today, there, uh, there are little individual cellophane bagged uh, uh, communion hosts in the back of the church. And I invite you to, um, to just go back, even right now, just go back and grab one of those. And when it's time for you to receive the bread, we will do so together. Let us pray. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this often in remembrance of me. 
Remembering, therefore, our Lord's death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now with boldness we pray as our Lord has taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We feast on God's meal of love for us together. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And I invite you now to take that piece of bread, that communion host that you have, and place that in your mouth, remembering that this is the body of Christ broken for you. And in a moment, I'll invite you to come forward and to receive the wine here from one of our servers. But we are reminded that this is the blood of Christ poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Christ. Amen. And now the praise band will be singing while we gather, and I invite you to join in singing with them. Please come forward uh, to receive the wine. Our servers, would you come forward, please? There we go. Now everybody fights for it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. On the praise band is going to receive the sacrament first, and then uh, they can lead us in song. blood of Christ. Hey. 
they sat around the table. And dine at the table, drink the wine at the table, eat the bread at the table of the Lord. Come and dine at the table, drink the wine at the table, eat the bread at the table of the Lord. After all the men done, Jesus poured the cups of wine, giving thanks. Kim, receive the blood of Christ poured out for you. I invite you now to stand as we conclude our worship in prayer and in song. Let us pray. Lord, as you have nourished this congregation once again with the glorious and great gift of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, so may we nurture the world with your same love. Teach us, Lord. Gather us. Inspire us. Strengthen us that we might be the church in all that we say and do this week. Thank you, Lord, for your gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. Our sending hymn today, This Little Light of Mine, I invite you to sing it with joy and gusto, and then we'll conclude our service with a blessing and a dismissal. Let's sing. <clears throat> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, oh Jesus, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. All right, how can you not be uplifted by that? Thank you, thank you. Now receive this blessing of our God. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may you go in peace, for the living word dwells in you. And the congregation says, thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Amen. I invite you to uh, enjoy and worship to the prelude today, Kate's prelude, and thank you, Kate, for playing. And, uh, And I will greet you at the back of the church with my mask on. Thank you.
Now go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Amen. Amen.